Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, ladies. Hello, Good morning. morning. Great. How you, I love the purple thingy. You can mm. give her a disco. She's blinging, blinging. I mean, the once upon a time, this is like a party dress. Bling now, it's like an everyday dress. She's a bling. No, bling. it's not an everyday dress. It is a mood dress. You know, okay. you're in a mood to inspire Just one kind of feeling. Inspiration. Yeah. So, some right. dresses put you in a specific mood. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how you doing, Marianne? Fine, thank you. You guys, have you seen this? Um, a video making the rounds. It's a uh, animation of a first. It's a story of a princess. She's a white princess saying, "Oh, she's ready to lose her beauty for some some something." And so the witch now casts a spell on her. She lost lost and she loses the beauty. And to lose the beauty, she now becomes a black princess. Really? Mini? So yes. So the thing is, I saw it on my chat, on my uh, Saint Louis chat group, my secondary school chat group. So people are conversing and talking about it. So does ugly mean black? black. I'm like, what in the same topic? I'm taking 18th it century topic. Mississippi in America happening here in this day and age. We're going to make it a topic. Ah. Go. It might, so be a topic of, might be a topic on Friday. Yes, on Friday. Friday. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic topic. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't want to get upset this morning. <laughs> I'm going to try not to get upset. I'm good. No, what you just said now, what do you mean? Black, Anything. black is beautiful. Yeah. Let me calm down. Okay, how's so it I'm out? doing amazing. I'm <laughs> thankful to wait, God. Wait, wait. <laughs> how is your thingy coming up? Yeah, it's good. Somebody called me yesterday from the UK. Uh, I didn't know her before. Oh. She said she saw the advert on Facebook hmm. and she decided to reach out. She was asking me for sponsorship. How does it work? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, you can pay for a couple of teachers. And she said, okay, I'm going to credit your account for five teachers, wow. which she did. And I'm so grateful for all the support. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Teacher here. Okay, I'll pay for you and I'll pay for you. Oh, thank you. So thank right. you. At the end of the show, get your names down. I'll pay for the conference, the, the training. Seminar, yes, the and training. Um, you can attend. So you get the details from her. So oh, I'll pay for yeah. the two of you. Oh, thank, thank you. So much. Yeah. Okay. I love you. I have to pay for one person. I'll oh. pay for you. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> How are you doing, Topsy? I'm, I'm very good. So my kids spent the weekend in my mom's place and they got back. That's what I'm enjoying. And mm. I'm looking for activities to engage them. And I, you know, I mentioned how we needed to learn music. And VC, I've been begging Obiaju because my kids don't play any instrument at all. And I feel that it is or it is something that I've read enough about the brain works mm -hmm. that every if, if you play an instrument, you're using more parts of your brain. Right. So I'm desperately looking for a music teacher that is affordable. <laughs> she wants to ship them off to my house <laughs> for two weeks and kill me. Uh, so uh, that, 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 that's, that's how friends, that's what friends do. Is it because of music teacher? Yes, that's me, I'm looking for music. Because somebody, somebody so came to me, somebody charged me 40,000 naira per person. I have three children, take me to Tianku for summer. Please. Mm. So I'm looking to be So reach body. out Let to us know. on Twitter, reach out to us on Facebook, reach out to us on Instagram. If you're a music teacher, you know, we would love well, to love engage you. you. Okay, any first timers in the building, okay. please, you have to stand Whoa. up for permission. We hey. have to recognize you. <laughs> and I see somebody, one of my friends from all my from my church, Christ Church. Hello, Kufri, how are you doing? Good to have you on the show today. And please, thank you for the others for being here. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, because, and those of you that are regulars, thank, thank you all. Yes. Round of applause for you. Thank you. All right, it's Wednesday. We have lots and lots of stories in the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. And I have to say a very big thank you to Bombita that gave us our beverage this morning. Thank you so much. You were here last week. Hopefully, we'll see you every week to the end of the year. I <laughs> since you are now part of us. Very good, <laughs> fantastic. All right, let's start quickly with The Nation. Aregbe Shola, Fashola, on others, on ministerialists. That sounds like a rhyme. Aregbe Shola, Fashola. That's how you now become a musician. Anyways, uh, passengers injured as air peace plane loses one tire. Hmm. Dignitaries honor Jack on at 90. Buhari wants Shiites as two more die. Panel to review Amazon's contracts and CBN to impose forex restrictions on milk. Let's start with this um, plane issue that happened. Uh, talk, we have that story. So yeah, um, a plane coming from Port Harcourt crash landed in Lagos. Okay. So um, the uh, uh, Accident Investigative Bureau said nobody should jump into any conclusion as to what could have caused it. Mm -hmm. There were 113 passengers, no, 133 passengers, no loss of lives, thank God. Mm -hmm. Everybody was safe. Thank you, Jesus. Um, the plane had to nose 
died, died. died. Yeah. and landed, um, brushed a bit. It was a major damage. They lost the tires, so it was a. It would have been a huge shock yeah. to the people within the plane, mm -hmm. and it was a female pilot. <laughs> Job. And every the videos that went viral online kept saying that she had she was extremely calm yes, and true. made people calm down that there was no panic a few a few bruises along the way but that it was a peaceful one and it blocked the um the runway right. so there wasn't even a lot of traffic within the airport the show, right? yeah. we gotta bring on the show yes we'll yeah. love to celebrate so that may I quickly yes. add that um, yeah. some of the passengers complained that mm. it took um, the rescue people a while to come and rescue them. So if, for instance, it had caught fire, mm. they would have just been there before they yeah. came. Mm. It took about 45 minutes for them. Yeah. Do you have the name of the woman? I have the name yeah. of the woman, um, Captain Ajibola. You know, um, that right. Captain Ajibola was uh, aware of what happened. This, Fantastic. You know. Okay, let's pick one more story. CBN to impose forex restriction on milk. Who has that story? Okay, so I have that story too. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, um, we're spending 1.3 to 1.5 billion dollars on importing milk. Mm -hmm. And Emefele was speaking, saying that we have what it takes to produce milk locally and that there was no need for us to be spending so much money importing milk. Mm -hmm. And that there's an industry around this milk, the same people that have been importing milk for over 60 years, that what, would, what we could do is to find the source. We have cows. Put the cows in a place. And his quote was that um, our cows, he said, our cows don't produce much milk mm. because they roam around, mm. they destroy things on their way, mm -hmm. and clash with farmers. <laughs> All this can be addressed if we keep them in Please. one Our cows are not genetically... Yeah, but our cows are not genetically made that way to produce a lot of milk. There are mm. kinds of species. Um, species that actually produce milk. milk. And if you go to NVRI VOM, mm. that's like an um, institute where they do all sorts of cross-breeding and things mm. with the cattle, They've they can come up with some, something mm. like that. But that's what he's, no, he's saying, that we should look into it, it and make money from milk. Mm. The $1.3 billion dollars are paying out for Forex mm. is now good. Can that be a very something others. else? Yeah, yeah, Moving yeah, on yeah. to the punch. Ministerial list nominees incompetent lack fresh ideas, says PDP, ASU, and TMG. Hmm. We'll have time to discuss ministerially, trust me. We have none of that and our guests coming very soon. <laughs> Don't test our will to act, Buhari wants Shiites. Eight construction workers die in Enugu underground water tank. Soldiers mother troops invade by also community raise houses. Three die as container falls off truck again oh in Enugu. Quarry uh, revoked Charlie bought in, by Saraki. We made Jack on this surf under Abacha, says Oshoba. Boris Johnson takes over as British Prime Minister today, and police go after Undo Hetzman Vigilantes. OPC talks tough. Let's start with the human interest. The, the water bio, tank. Let me. Okay. That bio, one is another ahead. story. So, um, um, about two soldiers in uh, a part of the troops of the 16th Brigade of the Nigerian Army were killed because militants came into where they were protecting. I think an all an all center, and um, militants came by the boat and shot opened fire on the soldiers and shot two of them. So they went back for a reprisal attack, went to the villages, told the people in the village to oh. leave this place that we are going to burn down, and they burnt down houses in the village. So the residents are suffering for a crime they know nothing of. The army is saying that they are not the ones that burnt down the houses. They are just after you know, chasing the remaining militants to make sure that they mm. recover the person, that oh, one of them that is right. missing. So I, I think that um, people shouldn't pay for crimes that they didn't yeah. commit. That's mm. the first Very one. True. Secondly, we shouldn't be de keep denying when issues happen. The yeah. residents have said, we, we saw these soldiers, soldiers burning down these houses, right. and the army is saying that we are not... Let's take one more story. Yeah, so yeah. congratulations are in order for our people across the pond. I guess Boris Johnson has just been <laughs> declared the new prime minister. I think he'll be inaugurated on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So our darling Theresa May has is going to put in her resignation yes <laughs> going to put in her resignation i mean it was a short thing to see a female another female yeah. um leader world leader you know was a good was thing good. but was she's good, actually All right, so the um so there is a private um the headsman story the police officers in undo are investigating um, a vigilante headsman group and that um and we also have a response from the opc that's gani adam saying that the area of kakanfo is saying that it's we're not threatening any um, OPC member that is threatening is not a member of OPC officially. We don't threaten. We're just mm. saying that we cannot have headsmen protecting people in Yoruba land. Yeah. We have OPC to do that. Mm. And there's no Yoruba man in, 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 in um, a mem there's no Yoruba member of the JTF, the okay. JTF in the north. Mm. So they shouldn't have Yoruba. I mean, that's, that's 
Fulani. something similar to what the southwest, the southeastern yes. leaders so also said. So we can protect ourselves. Yeah. ourselves. Mm. Moving on now to Daily Trust. Senate begins screening of ministerial nominees today. We'll talk about that a bit later. Eight construction workers die in underground water in Enugu. Hmm. 140 escape as playing loses landing gear in Lagos. Ghanaian traders close shops owned by Nigerians at Accra. Military police detain GOC over stolen funds. This is our multi billion that we took the other day. <laughs> CBN locates three new banks to ban forex access to milk importers. Mm. So which story are we taking? The yeah, so eight construction workers. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, about eight of them are found, were found dead at um, a building site in Enugu. So one of them went to get into the uh, water tank to evacuate water for the building project. So they waited for him. They didn't see him. The remaining decided to get in and to check what was happening, and all of them became unconscious. By the end of the day, sympathizers were able to get them out, but before they could take them to the they hospital, all they, they yeah. all died. So, so, so in Ghana, yeah, go okay, ahead. Sorry, in Ghana, um, there's a clash between the Ghanaian traders and Nigerian traders. On Monday, uh, Ghanaian traders attacked Nigerian traders and um, locked up some of their shops. Nigerians now being Nigerians, they lock up your shop. Some of them resisted the locking up and came to the market and all hell broke loose. And the thing is, there's the electronic market in the central district in, um, in Accra. Okay. And I think uh, we took a story, I don't know if we yeah, took a story, yeah. saying that their government had sort of <laughs> signed a law saying that there's some thing, that, I think there's some sort of trade Commodities. that if you are not Ghanaian, you can't, Get you can't do, yeah, you can't do it yes. in, in Accra. And so, because of that, mm -hmm. I think the traders took the law into their uh, hands right. and locked and up the shop. Even um, the, the, the registration wouldn't go through if you state in your registration as a foreigner that you are going to be selling these things. Mm -hmm. So, the Nigerian businesses did not register their businesses to sell those, those goods and they are selling it. So, the from fellow competitors, the Ghanaians are saying, This is illegal, you don't have to sell right. this. And Can we have some of this in Nigeria? I would well? love Because I think people just come in here and sell whatever it is mm. and nobody's People's regulating. Yes. yes. Let's move on to Vanguard. New faces are Senate legislative screening. Hmm. Federal government to collaborate with Southwest Monarchs to tackle insecurity, says Shibajo. I won't return Nigeria to days of exporting jobs, says Buhari. Hmm. Military investigating Once stolen again. 600 million operations. I thought it was 400 million. Now it's 600 million. That money they stole. Hmm. Okay, it's before it's you know it's crazy. It's <laughs> 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 one billion. Let's move on. Uh, reps to Buhari and El Rufai don't release El Zagzaki on court orders. Um, share its continued process in Abuja. Oshimba Jotinubu, Oshoba, others eulogize Jakonde's virtues at 90. We celebrate you know, with the family of Jakonde, I think, every former, Lego, governor, of former Lagos. governor of Lagos yeah. State. Being 90 is a huge it's thing. Huge. And in this day and age. Yes, yes. And he was standing there with his wife. Yes. That, that's, that's, that's a healthy kind of 90. Ah, living long. That's and prayer. Yeah. In your yeah. and that's Baba prayer. Yeah. I yeah. use their life as point of wait. <laughs> use their life as a point of contact. <laughs> 90, I'll reach it. Amen. We shall all reach it. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, he, he's lived long, he's lived well, he's impacted the society for good. Every area, there's a Jack on the bus stop because he built yes. estates within his time. Right. So, so, and that's a good legacy okay, to have. Yeah, so, story. let's talking about GOC, the general commanding yeah. officer, concerning that millions and millions that we're not sure that have gone missing. <laughs> but he's being called to the Abuja office to answer questions about, uh, to give proof. If the funds that were stolen were actually diverted from monies for operational logistics exactly. as well as their allowances yeah and also they said that um they had made contributions were made by ngos the state government so and also you know from? people so it looks like monies that were meant to run that division and because even was taking okay, out so money stolen was, money was restolen was, yes wow. Again. So he has, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly 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 so but mm -hmm. the thing is that he's not authorized to get that kind of money so they're wondering okay where, where is money coming from mm -hmm. where is it going to mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll know the source and them um, the 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 arrested let's move on let's move on to the sun daily sun finally the list we'll talk about that we have hmm, the, Trust me, I think I'm excited about our conversation on the list. <laughs> Let's pick a story I've not talked about. U.S. announces visa restriction to Nigerians undermining democracy yes. mm -hmm. linked to election violence and fear panic in Abuja as Shiite strike again. So U.S. is saying that they're going to stop or restrict Nigerians who were involved in the election malpractice and just concluded elections mm -hmm. from traveling abroad. Now, the, the, the question is, how would they determine? Exactly. Who, would, who, 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 would, who are these people? Yeah. Who are these people? Yeah, but they, they, said they, they, people? they said they have a list. Yes, they said they have, no, they didn't mention they have a list, but mm -hmm. they said it's for specific individuals, and they said they are not fighting 
the government. They are for our democracy. But I would like them to release the list of the specific individuals because naturally Nigerians find it very difficult to get US visa. When you now have this ban <laughs> on top again, no more visa for everybody. So when you release the list, we can pinpoint mm. those people yes, that you know. Right. Mm. Yeah. So at least there are other countries in the world. There are other countries well, we yeah. can. So I guess this, this list is coming from, they are from the um, election observers. Yeah, so obviously yeah, yeah. based on those who they felt uh, undermined the, um, the entire election process. So mm. they are the ones who can try to restrict their visas from coming abroad. Let's, I think that's all we can take on front page review. Let's take Garda very quickly. Senate gets Buhari's cabinet nominees without portfolios. Shiites protest wages as reps oppose El Zakzaki's release. Let's move on very quickly to this day. Senate delays recess to screen 43 ministerial nominees. No land for Ruga in Edo, says Obaseki. After everybody has said their own sins. Okay, <laughs> MFLA, no, <laughs> no hurry to cut interest rate. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, ministerialist is the hottest topic in town. And we have none other than our own, our very own. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> I like this that. This is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I hope he's around. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So yesterday, President Muhammad Buhari finally forwarded the list, this long-awaited list, to the Senate for confirmation. Among the 43 names on the list are some of the former ministers. So the question is, are Nigerians disappointed? What were your expectations? Joining us on the show is our very own current affairs TVC <coughs> news head, Mr. Kola, Ababa Jide Kolade Otito Ju. Yo, yo, yo. You can Good join the conversation at 070-806-68014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. OK, let us dissect this list. Mm -hmm. So everybody was. Um, we've been anticipating and everybody is really um wondering was this properly done i mean that's the basic question because people are feeling that lots of people were returned some people the um, one of the most criticized ministers in the back uh, the former minister was uh, Alaji Lai muhammad and people assumed that maybe he wouldn't have come back but he would see him on, on the list um in gigetu, in gigetu was very highly criticized, criticized. <laughs> so People are wondering, like, was this properly done? Like, the people that returned, were they, are they qualified to return? With the, why are they back, do you think? Well, um, <coughs> the president is in the best position to explain <laughs> why he let some ministers come back mm. and why he let some ministers go. Okay. Um, for me, I would have wanted the minister of state for petroleum Mm. to return right. because he did a good job. Oh. He may not have always agreed with them. Yeah. And in this game, they don't want you to complain. Mm. So if you complain, oh, for months I wanted to see the president, I was not allowed to see the president. The NNPC GMD was not taking instructions from me. It was going direct to the president. Those are not the kind of things that <coughs> they want you to tell the world. Hmm. So, I knew he would be dropped. And he was. But if I were in the president's shoes, I would have let him. Because given even the level we had attained in the petroleum industry, it's one of the biggest positions that any African has held. Hmm. You know? So talking at a, um, <coughs> at a foreign uh, oil company. And then, like a whimper, we just let right. him go. So you're talking about those who have left. Another person I thought shouldn't have left really is Aldo, Aldo Ogbe. Not necessarily because of a lot of things that he spearheaded. I mean, yes, there were controversies, but it just seems that a lot of things he spearheaded were still in the yeah. early, yeah. early stages. And to take him out now and then bring someone who will have to learn the ropes over and over again, isn't that much more cumbersome and expensive. Especially when you'll be having that person defend a project he or she had no idea yeah, about, yeah. specifically Ruga. Well, um, I knew that Aldo will not return. Mm. I knew that the president was going to make 
um, Senator Akume, a minister. Wow. Why? Because they are already thinking of 2023. They want someone who can keep the APC alive in Benue State. Aldo Gbe cannot do that. It's not a political mobilizer. Mm. In fact, in my view, it's not really a politician. Right from the Second Republic, Aldo Gbe had always acted like a technocrat, focused on his job. Mm. But people like um, Akume, they are big mobilizers, they are strong politically, and they can keep the APC alive in Benue. Because when you look at the pattern of the last election, the number of states that the APC, uh, the PDP gained, mm. you will see that the APC needs to work harder. Mm. Otherwise, it will be defeated in the next election. Mm. So they are already thinking, some of the people that you saw on that ministerial list were put there so that they can work for the party, use their positions to mobilize and galvanize the party mm. ahead mm. of the 2023 exactly. election. So, okay. um, you know, the first question was, are you disappointed? The truth is, I wasn't disappointed because <laughs> I didn't have any expectation to be surprised. So with a low expectation, I wasn't impressed too. The question though, and the worry for many Nigerians is what you just hinted at, that this is a political list, not a list of people that would execute and make our lives better. Mm -hmm. This is a calculation and reward system. Wow. This is, my people have worked, let me reward them, mm -hmm. let me plan ahead, let mm -hmm. me strategize. Position myself. What we need is a major rejig in our educational sector, our health sector. Everything needs help. Adamu, but what Adamu we have is back. a political Adamu, list. Adamu, education, I'm thinking, for real? For seriously? Adamu, Adamu is one of the closest persons to the president. Uh -huh. He worked with him when he was um, at PTF. Uh -huh. Though Adamu, Adamu is, uh, is a Shia. But his relationship with the president is extremely cordial. Mm -hmm. The president doesn't uh, give away people close to him like that. Mm -hmm. That's one trait that he has. And for those who are very close to him, good or bad, they can hardly do any wrong. It's extremely, yeah. no. before the president will brush you aside, as someone who had worked for him for years, it will take a long while. And that's why we have some of the problems <coughs> that we have because we want him to bounce some people. Mm. But he would not want to bounce them because these are people that he had trusted, he had mm. uh, loved over the years. I was saying on journalist Angle some time ago, when people were making all that noise about Abakiari, and I said, see, Abakiari is not as close to the president as uh, the uh, AGF. Uh, Abubakar Malami. Abubakar Malami had been his lawyer for years. Mm -hmm. Abubakar was probably introduced to him in 2015 because Abubakar was even in the PDP. Mm, sir. You know, so, so okay. for those people who had been close to him for years, the president finds it difficult to dispense with them. All right. So, uh, what one name? I really do not. I'm not involved in all these their lists. I really do not. Just to do the job, that's mm. what I'm about. But one name caught my attention to me, Pray Silva. Mm. Uh, that's the Bielsa, former Bielsa governor yes. who had a case during the PDP uh, regime mm. where he had a case uh, with EFCC over 14 billion naira and 48 gotcha. houses mm. were confiscated from him. During the APC regime, we saw that those houses were given back to him and his name appeared on the list so and we tell ourselves that we are fighting, fighting corruption. corruption so where does this lead us hmm. well um one thing i always i'm a very patient person once you've not been convicted hmm. i have so little to say hmm. uh, if you can play your game very well and you survive the whimsical nature of the Nigerian judiciary and you don't get convicted, I can't stand on rooftops and be proclaiming you a thief, a thief, a thief, because that can invite action against me. Right. So he's not being convicted mm -hmm. and um, it's bad enough to even be suspected to be a thief. In the first place. But as we speak, it's, it's not, it maybe tomorrow they could find repent. something against him. Okay and he uh, could even be jailed. But for now, he's not been convicted, and he wants that. to contest 
for the governorship uh, of um, Baesta State. Maybe this will show up these um, chances. All right, let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with our guest. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Mr. Tojo, a few names here jump at me. Um, former Senator Mamura. I know he was offered a position, I think, last year or sometime, no, where he, I think he, he rejected it, I believe. Yes. Um, I know the um, Ralph Agbesha, former governor of Washington, Ralph Agbesha, also mm -hmm. was on, made the list. And people know that he worked, obviously, in Lagos State as a military commissioner works, and also Wemi Sola Saraki. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Now, that is the, for me, is controversial, because the brother, obviously, um, is somewhat, people, people will say, somewhat becoming irrelevant in that state. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a power play is of trying to sister? bring his sister against him? I mean, what exactly do you see, do you understand, by he, her being, making that list? Um, well, she's been rewarded for exactly. her faithfulness, yeah. mm. and uh, it's meant to punish Bukola Saraki because Ew. the sibling rivalry between Bukola and Bemi is the worst in the country <laughs> that I know. Are you serious? Yes. yes. Uh, when Bemi was to contest for governorship, Bukola opposed his dad publicly. And to ensure that Bemi did not win, Bukola came up with the idea of power shift to Kwara South. And in the end, Bemi did not uh, win the election. Hmm. Bukola felt that if Bemi became governor, hmm. that I would not be able to come into Kwara throughout the tenure. Hmm. Because they just don't like Themselves. each other. And the interesting thing is, they are offspring of the same father, the same mother. mother. Some people would uh, think that, oh, probably they, are different mothers, they, they came uh, from different lawyers. But they have, they have the same mother. But they just don't like themselves. Hmm. I so mean, it won't. now, as long as Bemi is the minister representing Kwara, hmm. she's like the alternate governor of mm. that state. Influence. She 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 rises to the top as the biggest politician in the in state, mm. outside of the governor. Mm -hmm. So that will net to Bukola Saraki to no end. Hey. And since their mm. goal is to keep him. In check, keep him irrelevant. As in, the choice of Bemi as a as a minister uh, is hands. meant to achieve that aim. Okay. And if you remember when uh, look at that viral video of Bemi mm -hmm. taunting taunting brother. Uh, her brother after the lost the election, doing a, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> Many of us felt that was indecent. Right. But it speaks to the level of hatred yeah, between mm. Mm. Uh, the, the two Let me take this call. Hello, are you there? Oh, I'm sorry oh. for keeping you. So I, I feel extremely worried for the country. I feel worried for my country when I realize all the underplays and the drama, the politics going on. Knowing that our president has an antecedent of not changing ministers. It means that whether right or wrong, this choice scales through. We are stuck until the end of this administration. But it's not bizarre, though. Many countries have this on the plate. We don't exactly. see them. Yeah, yeah, I feel so like happen. it's rather Presidents, naive of us to even, even think in that. the U.S., presidents do their best to determine those who even get into the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my worry is that where do Nigeria, where will Nigerians find recourse when we feel that a minister isn't delivering as expected? We saw it happen the last time. We saw cases where we felt the Minister of Sports wasn't doing what he was meant to do. We, saw in, we felt Chris Ngege said things that were definitely wrong, not true, and it was still there. What can Nigerians do? How can we hold these ministers accountable? Who do we run to? Yeah. Well, to the, 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 no. the truth is, <laughs> the president doesn't think the way you and I think. Mm -hmm. a, a minister may not make you happy. But he could as well be doing some things that the president is happy with. So what is the so job to of that the minister? Extent, so to that extent, 
it will keep him on the job. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I said some time ago on Journalist Angle that the president will split the transportation ministry so that Amechi and uh, Addis Rika, who are always fighting and almost came to blows on one occasion, mm. will now have That's exclusive okay. talks to themselves. Right. Mm. So we're going to see that happen. The, the, and the president is still keen about a national career. Mm. So he will want Addis Rika to continue that job yeah. of finally giving us uh, a national career so after the, the failure of the last time. Yeah. And then Ruti Miyamechi, also, yeah, the president really is passionate right. about the rail yeah, project. Right, right. So, we want Roti Me to also continue. <laughs> continue. Along Let me that pause line. you for a second. So, I have a call waiting for you. Hello, are you there? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Go ahead, Hello. please. Good, good, good morning. Yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, what I'm, trying to, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, though the president said that he wants to pick those that he know, and we have seen that he has picked those that he know, <laughs> but these are the, the people that have been tested. The question is, have we trusted these people? Because these are the set of people that we have seen in most of the states that they were unable to pay salary. Some of them have issues, uh, that is called corruption issues. So uh, we were expecting that the president, by as he said, that we want to run inclusive government, will pick technocrats that will make Nigeria to really get to the point that we are working, but and not to to reward because not to reward is politi uh, political friend because this list we have seen that is the form is the kind of list that is just to reward his political yeah. friend. Thank you very much. We pray to get to you pray to see how these people will work to make Nigeria a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know sometimes when I hear people say oh it's reward reward political friends I mean isn't it naive of us to think otherwise? We know that that is what is meant for. We're just hoping that among this loyalists that we get people who would perform. And another a name that comes to mind here is Pauline Talon from Plato State. I have to talk about her. I mean, she's been a long, she's a politician from Plato State that has had longevity, you know, from, she's been a minister before under Olusha Gunabasan. Deputy governor. Yeah, she's been deputy governor. She even ran for governor, but she didn't win. You know, she was offered an ambassadorial position, but she rejected it based on, you know, federal character. No, uh, no, no. And, she uh, said she wanted to be and zoning. close to her husband who was ill. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you post outside the country, how does she look after okay, the Okay, so those grounds. I mean, so this is a loyalist also. She has fought for it. And if you are to pick a woman, really, from the APC in Plateau State, she so was just very... You have that kind No, of what I'm saying is that... She, she, she merits it. She, she merits it. Okay. She's worked hard she for it. And she's also, a candidate of the First Lady because... Um, She's very close to the president's wife, mm -hmm. so I can understand why. If we want Nigerians to get excited a bit about this list, uh, I know we we're talking during the break about uh, former governor of Shisei, Rauf Aragbisola, because of the work he did in Lagos State, um, and also the fact that a lot of people believe that he, he did, based on what he had, that the capacity at the time. Mm -hmm. Are you hoping he gets minister of work, that they break off Fashola's portfolio? and give Fashola maybe just power mm. and give him work, work so that he can do the kind of work he did in Lagos State in, in, on the federal level. The audience agree. Do you, do you think agree? <laughs> I mean, they're excited about that. Do you, so do you, do you, do you think that's, that, that's a possibility? Yes. Um, honestly, on that list, if you are looking for a man who has the positive energy to do well as works minister, there is no better person than Raouf Arek Beshola. Um, Really? Uh, the Seriously? So, the truth is, <laughs> you know, I've always yeah. demanded that fashion last ministry should be split mm. uh, so into two at least. Because, too. look, you are there, then you will become a jack of all trade and a master of none. Mm. Uh, Fashola argued that, in, that if he ran Lagos, the whole state, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, eight years, that why wouldn't he be able to uh, run that ministry? But he forgot that. There are states in Nigeria that are more than seven times bigger than Lagos. Lagos. Mm -hmm. And you have a situation in which the roads, federal roads, the, 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 the kilometers, mm -hmm. when you tally the, uh, the kilometers that constitute federal roads, they are way bigger than, I mean, way uh, higher than what you have in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So there's even no basis for comparison to say I was governor in Lagos, therefore uh, I will be able to run those three ministries. The, the works so ministry the alone, yes. the works ministry alone, and the quantum of work, work. that mm -hmm. is there is higher than what okay. you have to do in okay. Lagos. They have to so, go on a break. 
I hope that um, Rauf will get Guess that job. Will, he's, yeah. he's very strong. He doesn't sleep. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard, we know. We if, heard if, 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 you, if you gave me a job to do, he will come out and see you at 3 a.m. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> believe that. I had to do something for him in the past. Mm. And the man who was working with me said, Ogama, I thought he was joking. I wanted to catch a little nap. <laughs> this man just came in around 3.30. <laughs> so they woke me up and I quickly positioned myself like, <laughs> like I had been working. <laughs> All right, let's go on. When we come back, we're still on this list. There's this Festus Kayamo. Hey. Let's talk about him. Hmm. And we'll take a quick question from the audience. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So still on this list, we, had, uh, we have Festus Keamu. I mean, this is supposed to be a human rights activist. He, we, he used to be on our side. He's a retired human rights activist. Retired, okay, he's a retired human rights activist. Because Festus Keamu yeah, is not retired. Can you retire? 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 They're supposed to be on our side. Suddenly, he's on their side. And they're thinking, okay, what's going on? Really and um, side, I see Sunday Diary. He used to be, he used to work with the uh, Ashwaju. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he was the chief, chief of staff, right? Chief of staff, yes. Now, people are coming and saying that, are these people qualified for this job? Especially since we don't even have portfolios. We don't know. So how do we gauge them? I mean, uh, for example, Sunday is qualified for, um, to be information minister. Mm. He's very qualified. You know? Okay. Um, we started journalism about the same time. Right. He's just okay. a year older than me. Mm. And I can tell you, he's a very bright man. He's um, given many role. He will play it. Okay. And he will play it very well. And he is someone who is quick thinking. Mm -hmm. That's why Shivaji was reluctant to release him to go to NCC at the time. So, but I know that Shivaji likes to reward people who are lawyer and people who have got the brains mm -hmm. because he derives so much joy when people spring out of. Mm. He's a um, he's, um, uh, conveyor belt of brilliant uh, minds and become something tangible. So Sunday has had this opportunity. He wanted to contest for Senate in uh, or your state. You know, he's from Ogbomosho. Mm -hmm. But he was late, and it was clear that he was not going to win. So they had to advise him, look, don't contest. Your, your time will come. And that time appears to have come for him. So a lot of us, we, uh, the news, uh, the news magazine, we are happy because uh, it was, yeah. was so, one yeah, of us. The Senate right. has shifted its recess for, by one week, at least so that they can handle the screening of these uh, nominees. Sure. But I want to ask, is there a possibility of returning a nominee or rejecting a nominee after the screening process? Or is it just for mere Take formality? Yeah. Take about and go. Mm. No, we, there is precedence. A, a, a nominee could be rejected on the floor. Remember the nominee from Lagos State who insulted um, the, the nationals, I mean the Senate, when they told him to 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 sing the national anthem. anthem. Yes, and I he said even my kid will sing it. So they just wanted to know whether you could sing it. Mm. I know the way he answered uh, those questions, rude. you know, was rude. So. They never, they didn't confirm him, and Robertson Joe invariably had to bring uh, someone else. But so, this Senate, can this Senate, based on the people <laughs> yes. there now, mm -hmm. would they well, be yeah, able the same to, of the same. knowing that they are not, their job is not to shake up anything? Mm. Let me tell you, people are wiser now. Ministerial nominees will have done their own work. They will reach out to the lawmakers at every level. So, these days, it's extremely difficult for someone to be nominated as a minister and then fail at the level of screening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they will have sent lobbies out right. to work for them, right. to reach out to these people, uh, right. and beg them, and all, all right, that. Let me, because of time, yeah, let me come to our audience. Then. You have a question from the audience? Go ahead, please. Yes. Mr. Babaji, uh, you have already 
say a lot of things I want to ask about the Mr. Dari in the university because many people said they don't even know him. Like, just some of the politicians, you know, they are thinking about who is this Dari? <laughs> even That's you what the politicians are saying. Hey, who is this and Because they want only Grassroot people uh, of their stock to become <laughs> ministers. So, they are, what I miss in that ministerial is it, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Abikedabiri. Mm. Ah, I miss, her I miss her. They've given her a portfolio already. I, I miss her. I miss her. Okay, thank you very much for that. Mm. They've given her a portfolio already the, as yeah. chairman. Young um, people. Yeah. People are complaining that, that in yeah. a country that has most of its population below 40, mm. we are being ruled largely by people in their 50s and 60s, mm. retirees, mm. thereabouts. It sounds the younger people, right? Mm. When you position yourself to take over power from the present ruling class, and they can see that you are serious. Mm. They will start draw, drawing you, you close. close. Mm. But our young people are only interested yes. in singing uh, uh, Naramali songs <laughs> and doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you know? no, Let me tell you, they are apolitical. We are young. <laughs> they are <laughs> apolitical. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, this is it. I will say this a zillion times, and I've said it before, even on this program, that. The young people are too apolitical. They are not getting involved in enough, politics. Okay. Enough. Yes. enough. Just, okay. just on your own, move around. Let you me see, take, we'll let see me what take I'm saying. From, from the audience. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. OK. Um, Mr. Babajide, you've said it all. But my question is just to, one, the place of youth. What Tobe said, I would like to pitch my tent on that. Mm -hmm. I looked at the ministerialists, and I saw people that are being recycled, politicians, not technocrats. They are being recycled. People that I know before from the late 90s or even 80s. And I'm looking like, I How want a better Nigeria. Think? But I want to see younger people, fresher people, people with new, new ideas, <laughs> not former governors <laughs> and former senators. And the women also. I saw 43 names. Only seven, seven were women. women. Yes. And we saw President Barry, I think was it two years ago, that he promised that there would be more women in my cabinet. Or a year ago, that there would so be more women. In my cabinet, has he really lied about it this? Didn't consider. No, I, uh, not the, the truth is, women. Hmm. I blame the women okay. as much I as I blame the youth. Okay. Okay. So the women have a weapon that they are reluctant to use. Their number. Women are easier to mobilize for elections than men. Women come out to vote on election date more than men come out. I know this because in northern Nigeria. The majority of the people vote on election, they are women. True. You know? Sure. Because they are easier to mobilize. But you have that weapon, you are not using it. On, you see, when politicians see that their positions are threatened, here. are threatened, then by young people, by the way young people mobilize themselves and position themselves for election, they too will start bringing them closer and closer. But what do we have? People go, young people want to contest, they want to contest president first. Already, yeah. Rather than start from maybe the senatorial okay. election. Make mm. yourself re relevant from the base. The okay, let me they say, want to go to women president first. Don't listen to women, they listen to men. So if you think that because there is a the woman, women that are mobilized, it's the men that will mobilize them. <laughs> if, I, if I try to mobilize my sisters, hey, let us come. Oh, Big ones, let us come. They gathers crowds every time. Not as for much as. Not, not, so not, why not are we not having Kevin Nelson here as the second person from Lagos? Women, because you do not mobilize yourself sufficiently. Even when you have a man and a woman contesting, they will go and vote for the man. Yes. We saw what happened with uh, uh, Sarah Jibril. Mm. Yes, exactly. Sarah Jibril literally got one, one vote, vote, her own vote. Mm -hmm. All the women there refused to vote for yes. her. Yes. But things will, improve, things will improve when women and I think the president's wife is trying to do that. Okay, yeah. unfortunately, when we women can't take begin any to more mobilize on this, themselves. support each other. Let you, we have a meeting at 10 o'clock. I have to let you go. <laughs> That's all we can take on this. When we come back, we don't worry. The Minister Alice is host. We know. We'll mm. try Not to. Today. Are we continuing? No, Not we'll, today. we'll think about it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So recently, Nollywood actor, mm -hmm. come politician Desmond Elliott has been under serious <laughs> attack for calling for a ban 
on foreign movies in Nigeria. According to him, the federal government should make it difficult. He didn't actually say ban. He said difficult for foreign content to come into the country so that local content can, uh, um, from Nigeria can thrive. Now, do you agree with this? Join the conversation 070-806-68014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. He didn't use the word ban. You know, Nigeria, everything just goes viral and just go out of, out of, out of, out of tone. But he said... Treat it like rice. rice. That we should treat it like rice. Hmm. Well, what rice did they do to rice? Banned, but, then, <laughs> but there are different ways to interpret that. Anyway, what are your thoughts on, on, on this? Let me start with... Uh, okay. Um, I agree I, I with I think him. it's just um, trying to see how we can make our economy work, mm. see how we can support our industry mm. more and it, there's nothing wrong in having setting bands so that we can focus in our industry and make it grow um not we know bollywood today and i know that their government invests heavily in their movie production in fact you don't see a single a movie producer in Bollywood. That's Indian movies now. Those, yeah. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> yes. Their government spends so much money and they've been getting a lot of revenue from their movies. Mm. So we are looking at how we can make our, uh, because we are quite talented here and we have a lot of good producers here, good directors, good scriptwriters that don't have the resources to put their creativity in paper and see us. You know, when we go to the movies and we watch Nigerian movies and we are complaining that there's no action, there's no this one. Do you know what it takes to shoot an action movie? I tried it once, I collapsed. Okay. It's not easy. So I think he's just trying to see how we can work together to support our industry, which is good. But outrightly saying you should not let foreign Content. Movies come. I don't think that is possible because the yeah. truth is, we can actually get them online ourselves. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you said, it, the situation in which he was asked the question it seemed like there was a party. So I guess sometimes you know you can get carried away. Maybe probably if it was a sit-down interview, he would have worded it differently. But let's, since everybody's talking about a ban, I think a ban is a bad idea. Especially now, personally, I've tried to, because Nima always complains, okay, why don't you try and watch the Nigerian one? So I tried one day to put on our Nigerian content. There's no content for children. Very adult um, content in the mornings. I'm like, is that what you want me to give away now for the foreign content that understands that, okay, in the morning time, children usually watch mm. TV. So this is the sort of things you are likely to see, sure. you know? So there's no, um, I remember also when we were growing up, we had things like Tales by Moonlight yes. and all those fantastic things. We don't have them anymore. anymore. So maybe if the Nigerian Nollywood can go back that way, give us um, impactful content, things that make sense, things that build, Probably then we'll be looking at, even without putting a ban, you see a lot of people deviate to watching, you know, local content. It's chicken or egg, an egg. You, um, you have to pick with you. The, both of them can't come at the same time. One has come before the other. You either ban and have um, production increase, but you cannot have this much influx of foreign um, movies and foreign content I and expect, expect local ones to grow. Mm -hmm. The competition is stiff. They have funding. We don't have funding. Some countries, the, the challenge with Nigeria is that when we ban, we don't ban holistically. We don't have a framework to ensure that this ban produces the results we desire. So if we have a framework to produce the result, which is to have more local content, good quality movies made in Nigeria, because we have the resources to do this, we might need to ban to achieve that. But it must be holistic. We must protect um, content producers. You must prevent piracy. Mm. You must ensure Tell that your movies and um, cinemas are done in a framework that encourages local content. If I always hear... Uh, an international movie, I would watch it three times before watching a Nigerian movie because I have the option. However, if all I have is Nigerian movie at that time, I would watch it and I'll pay my money to do it. So ban would work if we have the holistic framework to make it work. And I think we need such in Nigeria because sometimes those difficulties would, would force us to think creatively and find solutions to the problems we have now. Let me come to the audience. No, I have a few comments from the audience. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. So I want to commend the uh, efforts and the comments of this month, Elliot. I want to say this, as a veteran uh, actor, he's speaking from his own angle before he joined the political circle. And I think that if you are not advocating the industry, our Nigerian-based industry, very soon the abroad and foreign industry, they will overshadow and flood, the, and flood it's everywhere. Happening already. Because it's high time we try to regulate how they come in Nigeria when we talk about movie and all that. Because if he's not pushing for that, you will see that very soon. 
all these Nigerian actors and actresses, very soon they will have uh, like lower role to play, come mm. to international recognition and mm. even in Nigeria. Mm. Give it to me now. Like I, I, I don't watch more of Nigerians and uh, movie and all that because I know that I've already know how the movie will end. <laughs> Sometimes I already know what will happen next. Brother, so calm down. if we can restrict the foreign, uh, 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 the foreign movies into Nigeria, it will give them chances to work on themselves, yeah. how to develop themselves, and this if governments can spend, invest on them, I think. Everybody can't uh, be standard. You know, this, is a, this is a topic that is actually close to my heart. So, you know, I've always talked about it, it's just that I've not mm -hmm. been able to articulate it properly the way I ought to, to, to certain um, circles. Because it's something that I know that caused one of the um, things I have with High TV, which is a Nigerian-grown cable television. Mm -hmm. And one of, the advoca uh, one of our advocacy at the time was to restrict a foreign cable company <clears throat> from having premium content, such as the world news, the CNN, mm. the movies, then the, I think the Premier League, Premier League the yeah. Champions League. These are content that if it had been deregulated at the time, all of us would mm -hmm. have had access to it. But somebody, certain um, international cable TV had exclusive rights. Our government allowed it. Mm. If we had a government which was, which, that was forthright, forethinking, knowing that, listen, if this cable station comes, to our country, get all this is exclusive. Yes, it's exclusive, but if you're in my, in my market, you have to, you cannot be, you you cannot be exclusive. Be exclusive. All yes. my guys who are, all my Nigerian companies who are cable TV must have access to this premium content. At least even there's a way you can even break down the, 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 the exclusivity such that everybody has it. That didn't, that didn't happen. So one cable station had only exclusive rights. Got in all the subscribers. How do you think a Nigerian cable station would survive? Of course not. So yeah, we died. Now people are saying, oh, we died because of Premier League. There's so many reasons why we died. But that's one of the major reasons. Because our regulators, which is what um, um, Desmondella was trying to get on to understand that regulators must see ahead mm -hmm. and find ways. But what Tokwai also said is very important. If you're going to ban, what are the modalities? Mm. Because you can't just do an outright ban. Because then, whether you like it or not, people will still find a way to get it online. Oh, you find a way to download it. So before. you've got to find there's got to be a framework to yeah. ensure yeah. that if you ban it, Nigerian businesses actually yeah. grow. Because if you, I yeah, also, because yeah. I remember with the high TV, I think they took out there are some things. If you were on high TV, you couldn't watch um, anymore because that was on DSTV. And for a lot of people at that time, you watched maybe the sports. Everything else was, I'm sorry to say, quite substandard. There was not, I mean, already you have a population of people who are used to a certain standard. Whether we like it or not, we're used to the foreign standard. And we like it, had, it has raised our imagination. It has raised our you know, demand for what is good. And then you bring in something that is much lower. We can only want the best. Let me give an example of how much it costs. Mm. One channel on the cable station. Mm. I used to buy channels for high TV. I was in charge of buying channels. One can cost you six hundred thousand dollars a year. Jesus. Wow. One channel. That cartoon they are saying, oh, the, the Nickelodeon. Yeah. Do you know how much it costs for one channel? It's costing. It, it, it's money intensive. Mm. Your government must back you up. Yes. Yes. You can't yes. see as one person what's going on, what's going to the cable TV. Somebody must fund it. Yes, That's the problem we have in this country. Yes. Our government must see that head. So if Mr. John says I want to do cable TV, FS TV died, ITV, there were, there were a number of them that died yeah. just because we don't have that support. All so right. what he's saying is deeper than what he said, yeah. but there's more it to is, it. It yeah, is. And I would also say that um, the Nollywood industry, they are not united. For the government to pro probably have, uh, to be able to back you up, you need to come, you know, have one front, project one body. So you what come action? here, you see the new body. You come here, you see the old body. You come here, you see the dying body. <laughs> Everybody is trying to do things by themselves. Mm. They started with this uh, AGN, mm. Actors Guild, yeah. and till today we don't really know what is happening in that industry. We have cases of embezzlement and all of that. So mm. we, need to, we need to Nigeria, come together. Yes. We need to As come said, together. This topic is extremely close to my heart because yeah. <laughs> I was in the middle of it when I was on high TV. I remember very clearly that there was, I think it was the second bid wanted to for the Premier League and there was a minimum, there was a, we had, we needed a letter mm. from our bank. Now, every bank, the, the, I think the CBN had to give us a, a letter of guarantee, just to guarantee that, okay, we're going to pay this amount of money. South Africa wanted to bid, a company in South Africa wanted to bid. All they needed was a letter. Nigeria, we needed a letter and what? A minimum $7 million first. Mm. To show that you have commitment. Yeah. So we just, just need a letter. All they needed was a letter from the CBN. To guarantee, yeah. we didn't need that. We need a letter plus the money. Money. money deposit. We're gonna find that money. So, that, when, when, so when, when we now have um, people involved, sorry, Tapoy, I'm gonna break. Oh, <laughs> stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So I think I have a question or comment from the audience. Go ahead, please. Desmond Lelit is actually he's actually talking about from, from his own point of, point of view, but according to what he's trying to say, he's a good producer though, but Nollywood as a whole, they are not united. They, they don't have unity at all. Let's come to the Yoruba aspects. They are, on, they are doing their films on their own. The, let's say the Igbo aspects, and everybody wants to be on their own. Yeah. They don't have that unity to come together under Nollywood as a whole. Mm. Everybody wants to be on their own, mm -hmm. Yoruba. And, and again, they keep repeating actors in their films. Like my dad, you'll be like, ah, you people don't get tired of watching same the this same person doing doing the same every thing. Every day, every day. <laughs> Why, how, how, as in, and if when they start the, the film, you already know next. what is going to yeah, end it. You know the how they are going much. to. You're right. You're right. <coughs> yeah, Mariah, I have something to say. You know, about this, one more thing about this ban also, I think we need to be careful about is um, a lot of people across Africa watch Nigerian movies. Mm. So imagine if you put a ban on foreign movies, they'll put a ban on yours. And a lot of people, and a lot of money is made from people. I mean, I remember in London one time, I met a I think Gambian or Senegalese, and she knows all our Nigerian actors and their <laughs> names and all the different movies. Imagine that sort of reach. And then you stop their own movies from... No, in the form of the foreign. They, they can, you can make yeah. African movies. Yeah, the way yeah, you can yeah. actually modify well, it. Well, it's the Oyibo well, movie. is the well, white so is film. The, oh, is it's the Hollywood. We are Hollywood talking about. Yeah. As, as we are black now. We are not fine. It's even a good one. Because, <laughs> <let's see laughs> it because you know, the, I know that um, the government has tried to find a way to... We need to find a middle ground to this because even in our NBC, uh, the NBC, the NBC code actually doesn't allow foreign content after I think 7 p.m. Uh -huh. So because that's, that's prime time okay. from, from local that's TV, local, that's TV. On local television because. Cable, you pay for it, so you get what you Where want. Are, but because it's terrestrial. When we went to watch Niger a Nigerian movie in the cinema, we were paying more money because it was called a blockbuster, mm. as opposed to the um, foreign movies. So if you would start making it a bit more expensive, I don't like that though, because and I like watching block foreign your movies. Buster. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we make it cheaper for Nigerian movies to be accessed at the cinemas. It would also improve it. Mm. Somebody said something about that the foreign music. Nobody banned foreign music, yes. but somehow content. It, so, so somehow the Nigerian music industry content. has gone That's international. That's what we're saying. Yeah. So, so it's about working on our content, content. Yeah. improving yeah. ourselves, working on our craft, updating ourselves. So you don't just start and get you. You see some actors; they just act one, two films, and they are already producing. You have mm -hmm. no skill, no At expertise all. to do that, and you are doing that. Why not? Cincinnati says, with the advent of internet and technology, you can't continue to use words like ban. Are you going to ban the internet service providers or ask them to put a restriction on certain websites and apps? China has done it. Netflix is there. People pay for these services. Mm -hmm. You can't trample on their rights. Yeah. Um, e e Eniola says, will Mr. Desmond, Desmond Elliott also blown, block the information highway? Shi Tzu says, it's very simple. Improve your quality mm -hmm. and the content of your movies. Slowly, you will get back on track. And lastly, control how your movie is being distributed. That way, you would avoid piracy and make your money, which I believe is well, what you're fighting for. I personally for. agree with him. I think they actually it should be banned off terrestrial television totally. Go mm. and watch it online. Mm. We'll not stop you from doing what you want to do on TV. But on Nigerian television, take it off. Make it Nigerian. That's what I believe. I disagree with that. You disagree? That's fine. It's good to disagree. We can all disagree to agree, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.